Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. As a character stream, I mean, um, you it know, depends converting. on the nature of the data. If you have an image, also, you know, image also we, we, we could convert it. Right? It, it, it depends on the nature of the data you have, and you know, um, how how it is actually. So, if we if we make uh, in the same example instead of .txt file, it will get copied, right? Yes. But for what is you the Sorry. Yeah, tell me. You ask me. Uh, so what exactly is Outdot doing? It's converting back the ASCII into character and displaying. That's what it does. What is the? It, it, it doesn't treat it as let's say. It doesn't treat it as um, as a character though. It, it you know. It, it treats as a file. It's writing into the file. Yes, it it, it, it writes in the file a byte, not the character. Where are we printing this? We are, uh, oh, we, we are reading we, we are, the file, right? Yes, we are reading the file and we are writing it to the output stream. Right, 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 right. We are writing yeah. it to the output stream. So what is the yeah. file output stream? Here it is a file output stream and it is this file. Yeah. Can we see that out file? This is the file. So it's basically doing um, instead of sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, it's doing A B C. Yes. So is it converting? It internally it does writing? it. It, it okay. internally does it. We we don't do anything to it. The output right, right. when we write it, it internally does it. Right. So the write write uh, function or, or write method is basically converting it, that back to character and writing it into the file. Is that the significance of that it, method? It, it, it tries by, but you know it is anticipated as the exact data by the system act. So read method reads only the integer type. Read method returns returns an integer. The byte yes. it, it can't. I mean the byte when it has it it converts into an integer and it returns. You know right. This method is already defined right, in right. the file input stream class yes. by the Java people and it returns an integer. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Okay. It, it and write an integer. Right. What does write? Can you click on the write and show me the definition of the write? What? The signature? This, yeah, the write. Uh, yes, we can write uh, byte. an int. We can write uh, byte array also. Okay. We have the overloaded write method. Uh, Neha, if at all, if you want to copy based on the, some condition, like first three 
by its equal to abc then only copy those records into my output file so is it possible to do that yes you can check it you can, you can check it again the cat you can read those three things and you can compare it so how can, do you, you know instead of taking bite by bite right or you have to uh, see when we want to compare some characters we use the character stream instead of a byte stream that's what i was exactly okay. saying we use it depending on the nature or what exactly we want to do i mean that's the reason java people have declared many i would stream instead of just having one Does it make sense? Yes. Think it, and of course, everyone. Does it make sense? Yeah. 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 We will be seeing those things, right? Next after this. Yes. I mean, the next thing we're going to discuss is like the character streams in Java. All the character streams in Java are the class of of reader and writer. All the classes come from reader and writer. These both are the abstract classes, so we don't create we cannot create objects of it. And we have the extended concrete classes: file reader and file writer. So, uh, if, if you see, observe, you can kind of same. They work, you know, almost the same way. You can see the percentage of the classes. You know, we we just have the read method. to read the end of the file is treated as minus 1 and if, every time of reading we are writing it to the output stream it's like you know uh, they're all the methods or the way they work is almost similar See, when you want to do it, you want to you can do it on a byte basis, byte by byte, or you can do, let's say, per character. Okay, let me tell you. Oh, sorry. When you are let's say copying characters, right? Folks, can we assign a character to a int? Uh, I'm sorry. Can we assign an int to a char variable? Uh, you can cast it. Hmm. I don't think so because uh, you can do the reverse. Do. Hmm. Okay. Let's say okay. 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 I'm doing it. So, folks, what gets printed over here? It's printing each character, right? So, int int value is folks observe very carefully. I mean, it, it maybe answers to make you a question. Let me go here and it's just uh, maybe. I mean, I just reduce the character so that you know the output will be more fun. So when you take an int, what is it? It's giving the as equal. But when you keep that int into your character, what's happening? It's, it's giving you the character, isn't it? And when could you go ahead? Can't you check the the characters and decide from here? You can do that, right, Venkat? Your question, which you were asking previously, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. So it's an int value it's trying to put, but if you want to get the character value and see it, or if you want to compare it against, you know, let's say you have a string. So you want to see, let's say, you know, the starting of the file is this or not, right? You can do that by comparing again, you know, different characters in it. If you want to get, how do you we get the characters from this thing? We have the character method. So I I can say else dot char 
at of zero, it gives me A. Carrot of one, it gives me B. Carrot of two, it gives me C. Even the characters in a string are zero index, zero, one, two, not one, two, three. You know, these are the reader and writer, the file reader and the file writer. We have to read and write the file. Folks, you understand this? I mean, all the time when you open a file, when we have input readers, input stream, file input stream, anything, we have yeah. to close it. Yeah, uh, no, this is actually it's like pretty clear, but one thing that I still find confusing is uh, uh, in whether it's we are reading the character stream or byte stream, we are essentially doing the same thing. So, it's what exactly is the difference because like if i'm seeing this file reader i again put it into an int and uh, if i see the input stream file input stream means i'm putting it into an int and uh, so the, what, I mean, is, uh, what is the difference between these two see if you if you take it it is dependent on the byte Let's say, you know, if you want to copy an image, let's say we cannot use the character. In this specific case, it's, it's almost doing the same thing. But, you know, you're getting the output the same way, but it might not be the case in all the scenarios. Actually. Yeah. 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 So if I'm trying to convert a non-text file, uh, shall I uh, use the byte converter, like the file input stream and a file output stream? The byte based, it's like, um, yes, if I'm doing an image, we go with a byte and, and not with a character. Okay. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. So folks, when you're writing it to an end, it's, it's the ask which we, are, which we are putting it. But when you put it to a cat, right? When you put an into a cat, you know, it, it, it gets the character that corresponds with the ASCII code and puts the character in the car variable. Can you see what is a character book? It's a, it's a signature, or let's say, you know, it's a kind of a character. But what is a byte? Byte is a concrete size in a computer, right? If you take a character, you know, I mean, it's not necessarily be um, 8 bits all the time, right? But a byte is, is, is always 8 bits, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Um, is a question different from what you're uh, explaining? See, let me tell you this way: a character stream is is wrapped. Think of it: a, a character stream is wrapped around a byte stream. You know, you can have specific encoding with the character stream, which we which we don't which we cannot do with a byte stream. A byte stream is, is just reading bytes. Okay. But the character stream, we can, you know, we can specify the encoding style also. Okay. I mean, it's a, I can say a character stream, let's say it's a wrapper around the byte stream. Instead of just copying the bytes, you can add some encoding style to it as well. So, uh, yeah, one one question here. So, in the finally block, we have written if reader not equal to null. So, 
what happens like when the file uh, when the See, file when, is, when it is null i mean when you don't find it you got the exception and finally the control comes over here right let's say i say your file in mon.txt right so what will be my reader here let's say i'm catching mm, the null pointer exception here also i'm, I'm catching this null pointer exception here Let's say I catch exception, forget about, not, I mean, right yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. What will be my reader here? Reader will be null, right? Yeah. See here, my reader is null, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If so, I don't check this and say reader or close, it's going to throw a null point exception, right? Mm -hmm. Agree, agree. That's going to so be uh -huh. Yeah. So whenever, so I don't know whether this is true or not. So when the file ends, it doesn't make the reader as null. So reader will still be a, a value of a file or like the content of the file. See, when when this specific file doesn't exist, reader will be null, right? Because it, it's not able to create a file reader, it cannot assign it to, a, to the reader reference, right? Agree. Yeah. So. Uh, so there can be some scenarios when we are writing code, we are not sure if the file really exists, right? Yeah. Even yeah. in this scenario, we don't want to have a runtime set. You know, we just want to, we, we just want to close it if something exists, right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, we want to close it when only when you know if a file reader exists. There is no yeah. point in trying to close the reference is not pointing to any file reader, right? That's what this null check is for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I mean, when we so, when we okay. talk conceptually, but when we see, you know, we cannot call a method on a reference that is null, right? Yeah. That's so two different that, perceptions. Yeah, mm -hmm. can we just do a very small test? So in the reader, can we revert back to the old file like h 2 k 5 in and, uh, mm -hmm. and just uh, print anything inside this not equal to null? Like if, uh, in the family block, if the reader not equal to null, just print anything. I want to see whether the code reaches there or not. Yes. Yeah. Is it here? Yeah. Right. Okay. Again, a uh, bit tangent question. So, like, can I make reader equal to null also once I'm done? So, uh, when you do reader is equal to null, okay, folks, a good question actually. <laughs> when I say reader is equal to null, what happens, folks? I don't close it. I say, I say reader is equal to null. What happens? Wait for garbage you still have the wait exactly it waits for the garbage collection to happen there is an object that still exists which is not closed right but reader is not referring to it right but this reference variable is not referring to it because you have made it null when you make it null it's not referring to any object but that object still exists right yes so basically, reader dot close forces the garbage collection. Basically, like it, it removes it from the memory, from the heap. It uh, closes the stream, you know, and whatever the resources that are being used for, you know, for a, it's a it's a stream connection, right? Mm -hmm. to, to read it, right? So it releases all the resources that are associated with it. Okay. See, once we close it, right? Can I say reader dot read here? So what happens when I do that? Some exception. I do exception But then why is it not telling me that it's throwing an algo exception? Stay close. It's not telling me because I have already declared this exception here, right? Yeah. So when you try to read this after closing the reader, it says it is it's showing not null. It. If, I'm sorry? 
yeah it's showing uh, exception in culture yes, exactly i'm saying yeah. yeah why why we didn't see it here as a compilation error is because we have we have already declared that the method is showing exception right that's what yeah. i'm trying to say mm-hmm. Do we are reiterating the concepts of exceptions also, folks? So see, here if reader is null, it throws me null pointer exception, right? It doesn't throw me I/O exception, isn't it? If my reader is null, if I say reader is equals to null, it throws close answer. It throws null pointer exception. We cannot use all these methods after closing the reader of after closing the readers. We cannot use this method. Folks, and the next thing which we have is the line-oriented input output. So instead of reading a byte or a character, we can read a single line. Why do we do that? Instead of reading a single character, why do we do a line-oriented input output? Better performance, probably. Of course, yes. So the root classes or the buffer reader and the print writers. So for, instead of reading a single character or a byte, we read the file. So it's, it's the same. We have the buffer reader. The buffer reader takes a file reader object. That's why first we are creating a file reader object. How, I mean, we create a file reader object and pass it to the buffer reader constructor. And then the print writer takes a file writer object. So we're creating a file write object and passing it to the print writer constructor. So we have the input stream and the output stream, and we have the read line method, which reads one line at a time. And if it is end of the line, it returns null. And Mayha, yes, I don't have buffer right here. <laughs> I don't know why the name. <laughs> yeah. We have buffer reader, right? Why we we don't have buffer writer classes? Maybe we can we can have it. We can. Oh, okay, I thought um, we don't. So this input reads one line at a time, and we write to the output stream one line at a time. And of course, all the input and output strings, whether it's by character or line, we have to close them finally. Yeah. So, okay. And uh, so, does all the all these uh, so we learned about the buffer reader, print writer, and file input, and file output. So, both do, do we have to use them in combination, or uh, means I can read from character and. Um, it, it, it depends on what you exactly want. I have like a whole text, you know. I have a whole text of thing which you want to. Just write it. Better I go for a you know line based, or uh, as Venkat was saying, that I want to check some characters and do it right. So I, I can go with the character string, just check it and do that. Even I can go with the line output also get the entire string. Use the substring method and get the first characters. You know, it it exactly depends on what you want to do. Okay. okay. Folks, if you just think that you know, uh. I mean, in the initial stages. I mean, to be honest, even now, I don't know all the classes. Trust me, not everyone knows all the classes present in Java or you know all the methods present in a specific class. But we try to see the methods. Like when you do control space, right? It tells you what are the things that are available on it and what is the functionality of each. When I say print, it just writes. When I say print ln, it writes to It writes in a new line, right? So we do control space and see the functionality of each and every method present in it. Because no one magabs all the methods present in a class or all the methods present in an interface, right? So when I, when I want to do a line output, I'll see what, what else can I write to an output stream. I can write a boolean value. I can write a character. I can write an object, right? Yes. Folks, you see it here? Yes. Yes. So that's how we actually go ahead with 
you know when we code that's how we do i mean when we're trying to do i would don't just like you know when i have not worked on io or you know i haven't done you know any kind of coding with io see you know what are the classes and you can just do control space and see what are the methods that are present in it what else is possible with this object what else can be done on this object right that's the way we all learn actually and that's the beauty of this id you can go to a site and say you know uh, get out the three methods but still when you're coding itself you have you no know, you can just do it i have an object and i want to write it right so i you know i know there is something print i just check if the print method is taking any object and if i find one here i have one here so now i understand i can i can write an object right I mean, this is not a concept. I'm just uh, concept of I O. I'm just telling for anything. Yeah, right. Folks, even people like architects or people who are working with Java like for thirty, forty years also, there might be some classes which they are not aware of because no one tends to put their hands on each and everything, right? Right. But still, the ability of working the one thing gets you to work on the other. If you just see, you know, you don't know if a buffer writer is present or not. Here, I can say, you know, buffer reader and see. I have a class buffer writer, right? So someone was asking, "Do you have a class buffer writer?" Then you will see it. We are not sure on if there is a class buffer writer, yes or no, right? So we just do control space on on this and say, you know, what are the different classes or interfaces that are present in it? So if I have a buffer writer. Right. So let's say I have a buffer writer. I want to cre create a buffer writer object. So how do I know and how can I do it? Folks, please pay attention. I I'm new. I don't know anything about buffer writer. Buffer writer, right? So any object can be created using new operator, right? So I do control C. There are constructors, right? It, it takes a writer object, right? It takes a writer object. So let's say, how do I create a writer object? I have a file writer to do it. So I have set the object here, right? So this is not an API I'm teaching. I'm teaching you on how to learn actually, how to start, you know, writing code on something which you really doesn't know. So I know that I want to put a writer object. So I created a writer object and I pass it. What do I do with this writer? Right? So how do I know? How can how can I know on how to do with this writer object? Anyone? I just do control space on this object to see what it does, right? Yeah, it will show the method. Exactly. You have the right method, right? You can write a character array, right? You can you can write a string giving the offset, right? Mm -hmm. This line is a string. I can say I write it and write it, right? That that's how everyone does. Everyone calls action. How do you decide that which writer you have to use? I mean, is there something like a, a venue uh, uh, given information? See. Which writer you want to decide? You go to the API and check what are the methods that are present in here. Do I have, uh, you know, like a line? You know, it has this output stream. Let's say, you know, it has specific methods to write a new line and do all that, which I don't have it in a buffer writer. You know, you, you check on what are the functionalities that a buffer writer provides and what are the functionalities that an output stream provides. 
you know, a print writer provides. We have these are different kind of writers at the end of the day, right? So, depending on what we want to do, we decide on going with a specific writer, a print writer or a buffer writer. Uh, Neha, I have one question. Yes, Shankar. Uh, yeah, you told us like a buffer reader and buffer writer are constructed, right? They are classes. Yes, method for classes. They are classes. Yeah, default classes. Okay. Are classes. Those are the classes that are already created. I cannot create object of. Yeah, no. that's what. That's So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you're interested in a demo program, please register on our homepage on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-1269. 17615. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.